All right, the tow behind diesel powered air compressor. You know what that means. It is an air spading day. Today's goals, perform a root collar excavation on this very large white oak. It's a beautiful tree. The client wants to keep it in, in as good of health as possible. We also want to diagnose some evidence of possible decay at the base. We want to see if there's any butt rot that's advanced underneath here. Um, a buried root collar provides a great environment for rot at the base of your trees. And then we've got this other very large oak that has been put on the schedule last minute. And then we've got these hemlocks. We pruned these hemlocks off the house yesterday. And today we're going to address their root collars. And we'll also be treating them with a soil drench of, a, of a, a midocloprid to protect them against hemlock woolly adelgid. Got Trevor right now is setting up to protect the client's windows because the air spade does kick rocks and dirt. Luckily, we didn't have to go very deep for this root collar excavation on these two hemlocks, but you can already see a problem that the root collar excavation has uncovered. And this is what we call a girdling root. All right, I got the chest view now and we're going to start with pruning these uh, this girdling root back to this section of roots if I can avoid taking it all the way back here I I, I'm, I will so you don't want to do too much at once I mean this is a fairly large root but if we don't take it out it's going to limit significantly limit the growth and health of this main buttress root kind of in between a rock and a hard place when it comes to that. So I'm gonna throw in a just a standard wood cutting blade for this oscillating tool. We're gonna to start by just alleviating tension. There we go. This is where it gets really technical. When pruning a root this close to the buttress root, we want to be extremely careful not to harm the buttress root. It is like all in, indented into the buttress root here. So it's, it's very hard to tell where this begins and where it ends. Um, we, could, we could prune it back to here and that would, that would be a little bit easier, but we'd, we'd lose this part of the root system. So if we try to just prune it right here, then we, we can kind of keep this and we can still alleviate the pressure off of here, but there's a little bit more of a risk of injuring this. You just gotta do this extremely delicately. I'm going to attempt to cut it right here without going too deep and harming the buttress root. <laughs> We're getting a little bit more play. This might be the moment to use the chisel a bit. I come on the inside of this root, like, like the bark of the root is still in between the chisel and the, and the buttress root. So the bark of this root that I'm removing is actually serving to kind of protect the buttress root still. And here we go, I'm getting it out now. There it is. Okay, we got a big section of it out and we can see more of what we're doing. As difficult as it's gonna be, we want to do our best to put a clean cut on this. Thank you. 
this will a clean cut on it will promote faster compartmentalization and then alleviating this stress here it's still on this side which i don't like it but that would be a much bigger wound to have to open up right now it has this whole root system in intact and then this little bit right here plus the that's a much smaller wound to start to compartmentalize versus over here this is a much bigger wound plus there might be another branch off in from from in here that's underground under here we don't we don't know it probably is but yeah that's part of the problem of a buried root collar it's just one of several problems but. All right, moving on. this from the top of the tree the other day and we could not find it anywhere thank you lord Setting in right underneath. Now that we've uncovered it, we've got a better chance of it drying out and the tree being able to compartmentalize. You can see where the tree's compartmentalizing here and here, but this root right here is also damaged. Got some rot on that root right there. That root right there as well. So it's a really good thing that we're doing this. This is about as low as I really want to go. I mean, admittedly, we could we could go lower, but we're running out of grade to compensate to keep going lower. What we don't want to do is to dig a huge bowl around this tree and then cause a drainage issue. It's going to be really helpful that we have performed this root collar excavation and the environment for butt rot and root rot will be, the environment won't be as good now because we've, we've 
uncovered it. It's not going to be continuously moist, continuously asphyxiated. It's going to have airflow and light and oxygen. Believe it or not, trees actually respire through their root flares. Um, and so when a root flare is totally buried, it, it can put the tree into anaerobic respiration, which depletes its energy reserves much faster. It lowers the energy levels that it can allocate towards defense, which allows rots to take advantage of, of that and, and advance quicker. Another thing that a buried root collar does is it puts a mechanical strain so that when the tree is being blown around in the wind, it doesn't have the full strength of its taper that was developed as part of reaction wood, developed to give it strength. It's not able to take advantage of that taper because it's buried. It's acting like a fulcrum point. All right, we are starting to do the hemlock treatment now. I think it may be closer to 90. All right, yeah, hold it up level and tell me for sure what you think it is. I think it's 90. Okay. All right, so we pour into the mixing jug. All right, now we're gonna shake that really hard. And we are just sharing these together. For 85 milliliters. Pour it kind of as evenly as you can around the base of each tree. So trying to let, you know, half of it on around one tree and half of it around the other. The key is to get an even amount of coverage. With hemlocks, if you don't pour all around evenly distributing them, then you know, sections of the tree might not get coverage. And the lower you pour to the ground, the less splatter there will be. Once he has poured, I can come over and put some leaf litter down over top. Give it a cloprid, breaks down in sunlight. So it's important that we get this stuff covered right up. It'll also kind of protect the area from pets, kids, and stuff like that. All right, now we're going to figure the other three trees. We're gonna add all their diameters at breast height together. This double stem, the label calls to add the diameters of both the stems together. Six plus seven is 13, plus seven is 20, plus nine is 29. We go over to our chart here, go down to 29 inches, and we have a range of 87 to 174 milliliters. We're gonna shoot for 150, that's that's um, kind of favoring the high rate. And this chart I just developed off the label. Here we go. Trevor, what'd you get in the beaker? You got 150 exactly? All right, sweet. So he got 150 exactly. So for my record keeping, I will write 150 in there and we're sharing it between those three. Watering this oak for a little bit. This is the end result. We were able to get quite a bit of it exposed. Trevor is now treating the last three. Hey Trev, go get a little bit closer to the root zone with that jug so that we don't have um, splatter. Yeah, you don't want that stuff splashing on you, even on your shoes. We cleared the leaves away and then used the air spade to carve out these little trenches around the base of each one. Now we're just backfilling into those trenches. Did you already do this double stem one? This one's going to need a good bit. Got twice the crown in it. Soil drenching is really simple. Like property owners can do it themselves. And we have information on our website, which 
links to the Hemlock Restoration Initi Initiatives website. Oh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> Our website has a link to the HRI website. Hemlock Restoration Initiative. And they have treatment videos. You can just go to savethehemlocks.org. They have they have videos on how to assess a hemlock and and then uh, the treatment process if you want to do a soil drench. But we do offer this service as well. These hemlocks look pretty good. But you can see this one. Those uh, white fuzzies are the ovisex. You can't see the aphid-like creature with your naked eye. They're almost microscopic. You can only see their, their white ovisex at certain times of the year when they're ovipositing and all that. And a lot of people think that they go away and that the tree is, is all good but the little guys are still there and they settle in at the bases of needles and they just suck the juices out of the needles. And if not treated, they will eventually contribute to the decline of your hemlocks. All right. Beautiful white oak. You can see my pruning cuts out there. Beautiful white oak over this nice house we want to keep it healthy this is definitely an improvement from where it was that uh, butt rot can be monitored the favorable conditions for it to continue have been taken away the tree has a much better chance of having its defense system boosted back up and, and compartmentalizing stopping it from advancing well we didn't have enough time to keep going but we did make an improvement on this oak and identified another butt rot on this guy as well. This may seem alarming, but if you don't uncover your root flares, then you're just ignorant. Ignorance may be blissful um, until the tree breaks out at the base and falls on your house, which has happened. And people always think it's the wind that blew the tree over. It's not really the wind. The wind was that final force, but the tree, if it had had a healthy root system, would have been able to withstand the forces of the wind. It's the advanced stages of uh, root rot and butt rot and all that decay that takes away the structural support to where the tree eventually does break over and fall so air spading can identify presence of those decays and then you can from that point you don't have to remove the tree but you can at least monitor and at least know the extent of it and then you can make a more educated decision as to whether it's it's a unacceptable risk or or not and and also as i've explained already by eliminating the conditions that favor the decay's advance, you are giving the tree a great chance of being able to compartmentalize and stop that spread. You know, you might not have to remove it at all and it might not, it might not fail. But if you do nothing, then the condition's just gonna get worse and worse and eventually the tree is uh, much more likely to fail. Okay, final thoughts while we're driving home. That was a pretty hard day. We did a lot. We did several root collar excavations and we treated some hemlocks for HWA. We identified spot rots and so on and so forth. That kind of information can be a little overwhelming sometimes for clients, but it's really valuable information it's a very valuable service. And I don't wanna go into the details of exactly how much we charged for this, but I will say that it was less than half of what we charged for yesterday, because yesterday was me climbing and pruning and rigging over a house. And so the pruning, the climbing services, the tree felling, you know, using chainsaws, that sort of stuff, rigging, any of that is, is, is a lot more expensive than a tree health day. 
and a tree health day might be the difference between getting to keep your tree and and having to call someone like us to have to remove your tree for two to three times as much money at least in fact the tree that we air uh, root collar excavated to remove that tree would require a crane and to take all the wood away and everything you're probably six thousand dollars yeah we're like at a tenth of that for the price it's just it's just it's more than worth it to to make that preventative maintenance on your trees and correct bad growing conditions bad uh, growing environments that that can be corrected before it's too late so i hope this video was fun to watch i hope it was educational and uh we'll see you next time